हेलो व्यूअर्स दिस लेक्चर इज डिस्टाइन फॉर स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ केमिस्ट्री हु हैव टॉपिक चिलेशन थेरेपी इन देयर करिकुलम पर्टिकुलरली फॉर एम एस सी केमिस्ट्री थर्ड सेमेस्टर मेटल्स इन मेडिसिन इज द टॉपिक एंड चिलेट थेरेपी इज द मेन टॉपिक विच यू विल बी स्टडिंग थ्रू दिस वीडियो आफ्टर व्यूइंग एंड अंडरस्टैंडिंग द स्टडी मटीरियल ऑफ दिस वीडियो you must be able to cover the following topics and must be efficient to answer the questions that what is chelation therapy when chelation therapy needs to be provided how this can be provided what are the ways of removal of sequestered compound here sequestration means when a uh, metal binds with the chelating agents then that complex has to be brought out of the living system and that is called sequestration what are the specific characteristics for suitability of a chelating agent used in chelation therapy that all the chelating agents can be used for this therapy or there must be some characteristics examples of different chelating agents against toxicity of specific metal ions will be taken and later advantages and disadvantages of chelation therapy will also be discussed toxicity of a metal ion in a living system may result due to poisoning or there can be an accumulation of excess of an essential metal ion in different parts of the body this occurs when there is an impaired metabolic activity toxicity is actually a degree to which a substance can damage any living organism so in any case whether poisoning or accumulation such excess metal ion is not desirable and it must be removed at the earliest such removal of excess metal ion requires administration of a strong metal binding ligand so the method of removal of excess metal with the help of chelating ligands is termed chelation therapy this is the first question what is chelation therapy such complexing agents sequester the metal ion and the resulting metal ion complex is then excreted from the blood stream of living systems either by means of urine that means through kidney or along with feces that is through liver so these are the uh, ways of removal of sequestered compound how it can be provided chelating agents can be administered orally and in case there is some permeability problem across the intestinal wall then the agents can be given as an injection before choosing any ligand to be used in chelation therapy certain characteristics need to be checked now a brief knowledge about how the excess metal ions may result in toxicity the metal may block the essential biological function functional group such as enzymes for example the oh functional group of amino acid residues or the sh functional group of amino acid cysteine type residues many time nitrogen group of histidine these all are active sites of enzymes and a toxic metal ion can bind at these sites and when such binding takes place then the normal activity of the enzyme is disrupted secondly the toxic metal ion may displace the essential metal ions from biomolecules in such situation also the biomolecules no longer are able to perform their biological functions in another manner the toxic metal ion may alter the conformation of biomolecules the specific conformation is necessary for activity of a biomolecule and in any changed conformation the biomolecule remains no longer active to name some of the metal ions which result in toxicity at parts per million or parts per billion level even are mercury cadmium lead etc so the chelating agents must fulfill some important requirements the toxic metal ion must have capability to bind multidented coordinating molecules of the living system and it will surely be affecting badly so the chelating drug should have some strong coordinating sites and strength of binding must be more than the strength of toxic metal ion and the biomolecules for this the chelating ligand should have all possible binding sites like nitrogen and oxygen for hard metal ions sulfur and phosphorus for soft metal ions preferably the chelating ligand must be polydentate 
so that it does not let any coordination site of toxic metal ion free it should bind with such strength that none of the coordinating site of the biochemical system remains bound to the toxic metal ion next the chelating ligand should not have any toxic effect of itself and it should not cause damage to the other biomolecules the lethal dose of the chelating drug administered should be sufficiently more next the chelating drug must be specific to attach to the target toxic metal ion only our body requires many essential metal ions notably calcium and zinc ions so the drug should not affect any of the essential metal ion of the body the chelating drug itself should not undergo any reaction with the biomolecules its function is mainly to act as a binder and sequester of toxic metal ions the cell membranes are of hydrophobic lipid nature and the chelating drug has to pass through such membranes thus the chelating drug should preferably have some hydrophobic groups to achieve easy permeability across the membranes the complex of the toxic metal ion and the chelating drug must be water soluble so its removal through the kidney may be easy now next example of chelating drugs will be discussed polyamino polycarboxylic acids are the best chelating agents which fulfill the requirement of having polydentate nature and of forming very stable complexes with metal ions ethylene uh, diamine tetraacetic acid edta it is a much used ligand in treatment of metal ion poisoning you can rightly see in its structure there are six coordinating sites one nitrogen second nitrogen and four oxygens there and it is very effective against lead ion poisoning but marginally effective against cadmium ion poisoning generally it's used as calcium salt in treatment so that calcium is not labelized from the skeleton calcium edta is used in lead poisoning to avoid the problem of hypocalcemic tetany radioactive strontium poisoning also can be cured using this edta that is ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid dicobalt chelate of edta has also been used against cyanide poisoning a modification of linking a lipid to dtpa that is diethylene triamine pentaacetic acid this is the structure due to lipid group attached dtpa transports readily across the membranes and serious poisoning of plutonium metal can be eliminated using this agent the dtpa chelated complex is ultimately excreted well across the membranes and through the system this is representation of a strong metal complex having chelate effect as well as the five membered rings five membered rings does mean when this metal is bound at the center 1 2 3 4 and 5 all these parts are forming five membered rings which are giving extra stability to such metal chelate complex so this is about the first type of chelating drug that is the polyamino polycarboxylic acids next is british anti leucite This was precisely the first chelating agent used against metal poisoning. There was release of a poisonous gas leucite during World War. The arsenic of the gas leucite bound with sulfur of many important enzymes and proteins. British anti leucite. The name was given because it was acting against the gas leucite. It is 2,3 dimercapto 1 propanol. this is the structure 2 3 dimercapto 1 propanol here the ligand bal is able to bind arsenic of the leucite from its two mercapto sites these are called two mercapto or the sulfur sites and leucite is able to bind with this site also so in this way this complex of bal with arsenic is removed from the body then 
BEL is also used against mercury, antimony, bismuth, copper, nickel, zinc and gold etc. Here I may add that essential metal ions may also become toxic if present more than permissible limit at a time. There has been reports of toxicity of BAL. So alternative compounds of BAL has also been used. These are sodium salt of 2,3-dimercaptopropane-1-sulfonic acid. This is the formula of 2,3-dimercaptopropane-1-sulfonic acid and its sodium salt has been used to avoid the toxicity of British antileucite. Another is 2,3-dimercaptosuccinic acid. These are used being more soluble and less toxic. DMSA has merit of being less toxic and it can be given orally also. Next are the cysteine derivatives. You must understand cysteine being the constituent amino acids of the enzyme proteins, it is very easily acceptable to the living system. It binds strongly with metal ions but disadvantage is that it is biodegradable. So, a dimethyl derivative, dimethyl derivative, these are the two positions. Now, this is dimethyl derivative of cysteine called penicillamine. It has been used as chelating agent for removal of lead, mercury, platinum and antimony. Penicillamine is effectively used as a drug to sequester excess copper deposited in the body parts. Excess of copper happens in the patients of Wilson's disease and for those patients, this chelating drug is useful. Next is orine tricarboxylic -carbo acid also called as alumion. It is a chelating drug. It's a hexadentate ligand. It's used against mercury, arsenic and gold poisoning. So here you can also see that there are six donating sites, six coordinating sites which can bind with uh, any metal ion which is causing toxicity to the living system. Next, we have many chelating agents for removal of excess iron. Excess iron is a problem when any patient has been given blood transfusion. As body cannot excrete the large amount of iron in the transfused blood, although there are effective natural iron chelators like ferrichrome, but a synthetic drug desferol or also called as desferioxamine, it has also been used for trapping iron. It is uh, having three bidentate oxamine. These are the oxamine sites, first site, then second site and this is the third site. So it has having uh, oxamine coordinating sites and it is very effective synthetic drug to remove excess iron from the body. And last is the tetrithylthyrum disulfide which has been used against toxicity uh, when alcohol is intoxicating in the body.